Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back on the 49 Wheelies project, and as you can see, body filler has started. But we don't have doors on it yet, and I know that's contrary to what we've taught you guys in the past, having everything together, but because of our tight timeline, we have been doing everything from gapping the doors while body work is going on and trying to be proactive. But then we came across an issue with body working some of the detailed areas on this car. Although it is the smallest car we've dealt with, it's the most detailed car we've dealt with. And today we want to show you some different ways of thinking outside the box. And we're going to show you what we came up with by using a little bit of Play-Doh. Part of the problem that we had with this project, this Willys has never been an extra cab. They never made an extra cab. This was Willys trucks were always single cab trucks, and this was used with a wagon and chopped and sectioned to make this extra cab a little bit more roomy. But the problem that came with that is rust repair in the bottom of the doors, where the bottom of the door was rotted out. You guys, we did a video on how we repaired the bottom of the door. But the biggest thing that we're having an issue with is the beads in the door. These three beads are in the top section and the bottom section of the door, and some areas are in really good shape, which is what we have here on the upper part of this passenger door, and then in other areas where we've done our repairs and welding has been put around the bead. So around the extra cab areas, because there's so many areas that are cut and sectioned, everywhere that that weld happens, it shrinks in and dives in. On the cab itself, we have all of the beads around the upper portion that is a small weld around it. And although we went around in the very beginning and we hammer and dollied some of that out, when we go to body work it all now as one shape, there's inconsistencies and the problem is that the way that this bead is it's a very intricate design. There's a very sharp edge at the bottom of every one of these beads, and there's no real good way to get in there and block that back perfect. So we're trying to come up with different ideas to kind of help you guys think outside the box for your guys' project. So maybe it's a simple body line on your car like this bead has, or maybe it's a complex three beads in one shot. I want you guys to be thinking about different varieties of solutions to get that. Now, obviously our goal is to get everything dead flat and a mirror finish from front to back, but the cab has so many different shapes. There's a very slight curve in the door and the front of the cab is very flat. So when you have all these transitions, you end up with filler that might be a little bit thicker. And the, the problem with that is, if you have filler that's even a 16th thick around a beaded area that has a very crisp line, how are you going to block that back into the door? Some of the options would be maybe taking a round quarter inch dowel and putting some sandpaper on it and working sanding the, around these beads. But the problem is, some of these beads have been cut and sectioned in the center or even through the center, like on the cab, and now we have to come back in and make it look uniform and cohesive all the way through the car, front to back. Some of the things that we did was when the doors were on the vehicle, we took lasers and we set up lasers to make sure that the beads and everything were lined up perfectly before we gapped the door, made sure all of our hinges were where they needed to be. We made sure the door was weighted down with sandbags. We made sure we have weather stripping in the car, and now that all of that stuff is where it needs to be, we can start focusing on the filler. When I'm referring to getting a mirror finish from the door to the, the rear quarter here, or from the door to the rear extra cab portion, although this has been roughed out and body worked, none of the details have been done into the beads or any of the radiuses at this point. So what we can actually do is we can body work that door on the stand and get it roughed in and flat. And when we come in, we're gonna put the door right back in the exact same spot that we did when we did all the gaps. And then we're gonna tie the two together before we get into final prime. But the issue really is, is because we have the door that runs in. And as you can see, we have filler that just stops right at the edge of the beads. 
And because there is very sharp lines down in the very bottom of those beads, there's no real good way of sanding this way because what we end up with is we end up with grooves out here that will be lower than the area that is perfectly flat. Now, keep in mind, although it looks like a lot of filler, there is a lot of areas that are rubbed through showing you that this is a very thin coat. Even though something is metal finished and maybe you use polyester primer, we don't use polyester primer, but let's just use that as an example because it's just sprayable body filler. The goal is that you're putting a minimal amount of filler on something because when you have these issues, if you have excessive filler that maybe this weld seam didn't get just perfect, you end up with this ridge where this sinks down. If it sinks down ever so slightly here, how are you going to body work that and look smooth without losing this? Everything in this bead needs to be brought up ever so slightly, just like we're doing out here on the extra cab portion of this cab. And the weld seam actually comes down right through here where they took the wagon and sectioned it. This area has a very slight curvature outward. And so what my thought was, we normally sand our filler when it's a little bit on the wet side, so it's easier to sand and work the panel. But when it comes to the detailed areas, especially when it's thin, you can't come at that aggressively with an 80 grit paper. The thought there was, let's make a mold of the bead that is perfect that you guys have on the door in your vision there. And then we're gonna basically show you what are the details that we're thinking of how to make that block and that spreader work for this application. The key point here is that we need to make sure that all of the surrounding areas around our bead is dead flat before we roll into doing our body lines. It's the same thing as doing body lines on your typical sedan at home or whatever you have, you don't do the body lines first. You get everything front to back roughed in flat and you just dial in the bead at the very end. Some of you guys can use tape and if you haven't seen it, we did a video where we use a tape measure flipped upside down because you can adjust that ever so slightly where a tape line when you pull it will have a little bit of memory and you might get a little bit of sag. It's these fine details that hopefully will help you guys in your projects. So let's dive right into how we're gonna make our block and potentially a spreader to fix this issue. As simple as this may seem, what we want to do is find the area with the best bead. And in this case, it's the passenger door upper bead in this area here. We don't have any dents. It was a really good finish in metal before we primed it. We have a little bit of give right now because this has DP90 epoxy primer over the bare metal. We did two coats of DP90 epoxy primer and then we did two coats of the VP2050 on top of it. Typically we would just use the VP2050 but for some of the higher end vehicles that we like to do a little bit higher quality, I like the black epoxy because you're getting a very good adhesion with a true traditional epoxy one and the other thing that it's doing is as you get through that little bit of barrier of the vp2050 you have a black epoxy below for when you start getting thin you get that visual much faster from filler color to the primer to the black epoxy we have a little bit of mills not a ton but a little bit there that we can play with and i wanted to make this mold after it was already primed so we had a little bit more of a leeway in the past times that we've done uh, details on say an edge of a Cadillac fender where we had to make a mold. The problem was when we would get everything flat and roughed in just like the Willys is, we would make a mold, we would put the sandpaper into the mold, and when we would block it, we would end up with the grooves on the outside. So the thought here was, let's take some calipers and measure what grit we wanna use. Now, typically when we're roughing everything in, we're using 80 grit. But when you're doing a detailed body line, you're not gonna use 80 grit because it's too aggressive. It's gonna tear up the details. We want the details in that body line to still be there, and we don't wanna take away from the authenticity of the beads themselves. So what we've done is we've measured the distance of the sandpaper, 150 grit, is about 13 thousandths thick, 
where the 120 grit, we're looking 20 thousandths thickness. So we need something that the filler is not gonna completely stick to. And then I started thinking, what are the things that we could use? Well, you could use a mold release. You could use uh, tape. You can use different things that you can pull off the panel. But more in depth, when it comes to the sandpaper thickness, I'm gonna be spreading this, and because I wanna catch the details and I don't wanna use 80 grit to rough it in, I've gotta let that dry pretty much to the point where it's completely cured, and then sand it. So I'm gonna start at 120 grit, and I, my goal is to finish out with 150 grit because that's what we like to prime over for our final primer. The thickness being 20 thousandths on 150 grit, my thought was let's use some vinyl plotter paper. We use vinyl plotter paper for doing all of our graphics and cutting. So what we did was we, we basically cut out a sheet of the vinyl plotter paper. This is made by FBS, which is Finding Better Solutions. I like it because it cuts really easy for the plotter. Now I measured this after I've removed the adhesive backing and we have five thousandths. If this is five thousandths and that's 20, it's gonna take me to make up the difference of the sandpaper. I'm gonna put four pieces of this down in an area. I'm gonna use the Play-Doh to then make a dam around it. We are going to pour some filler into it and then we are going to be able to pull it off. At that point, we are thinking that this plotter paper, the vinyl, will act as the difference that we need to be able to put paper, sandpaper, into that body filler as a block. And now we can actually block those details into these beads. And also, with having a little bit of a barrier in the primer thickness, we'll be able to take out some of the inconsistencies that we have from those weld seams or maybe where things are just slightly misaligned and make them look nice and smooth. So let's show you guys how we're gonna do that. What I did was I went to the 99 cent store and I just bought some very simple cheap Play-Doh and we just wanna make basically a wall that we can push down against our panel where we don't have any damage or dents so we can mix up some body filler and put it on here. And what this is going to do is it's not going to allow the body filler to flow out. But if we were just to put the body filler on there, when you put the sandpaper on, now you have a smaller bead and it's gonna wear that all the way back down to the bare metal. And that is why I want to cut four sheets of this that will equal what we wanna end with in sandpaper and then put the Play-Doh over that mold and pour it. What we've done is we've mixed up, we just used 3M Platinum Select because I don't like Platinum Select. Typically anything you're gonna use to do just a mold for either a sanding block or a spreader, just use whatever filler you have laying around. You can use the cheap of the cheap, doesn't really matter. And then what we did was we mixed it on a scale, 2% of hardener to the actual body filler. If you guys are wanting to know what percentage of hardener, the big thing that we preach is putting exactly what the TDS sheet for that filler is, which the technical data sheet is what TDS stands for. It's just telling you exactly how much hardener that filler is supposed to have. For Again, for this, do you have to use a scale? You don't have to use a scale. 
we use it for all the filler work that we do so we're consistent with everything but when we're just trying to make a mold we're going to be sanding these edges down it doesn't really matter what does matter is that we used a little bit of honey and in, i say honey it's not what bees make honey it's the honey that's actually designed with the filler you can also use fiberglass resin the resin going into the filler and mixing it up will thin it out more like a glazing putty use whatever you have if you have glazing putty just mix up a whole bunch of glazing putty the problem is it'll probably run off your board when you're mixing up that much i was actually hoping for a little bit runnier of the filler so i could have added a little bit more honey to this particular mold but here what we're doing is we're trying to get the filler to flow into this mold that we've made with the play-doh couple pieces of tape and a paint stick to just hold the wall until this completely hardens and then we'll pop it off pull the play-doh off the body filler and you could reuse the play-doh again for later the vinyl tape that we layered at the bottom is going to be taking up the distance for our sandpaper to actually go in there and be able to sand these body lines perfect all right we're nice and dry let's get this uh filler off the door what's nice is it comes right off of the play-doh play-doh can go right back in the thing and be reused again and again and again that is some hot play-doh look at that no play-doh in it at all really bam comes right off I uh, shockingly cannot hold this very long because it is that hot. As soon as it starts to kick, we're pulling it because it is extremely hot. It's kind of nice because we have four layers here to protect a majority of what's there. And we got a nice mold. We only got one little air pocket there, which I'm not concerned about because we're going to be putting paper over this and using this as a sanding block. And the number one thing that I want is I want a nice, perfect profile that we can then sand and get a good marking on the other side. But this thing is so hot. Get it off the door or do it when the door is bare metal because we actually took a, a temp reading. This thing is 230 degrees right now. Now that we have taken this to the belt sander and squared up our edges so we can make a nice flat marking i just wanted to show you guys on the car how nice that it fits to the beads and you'll see a very slight gap that gap is what the vinyl tape gave us with by measuring that and comparing it to the paper grit that we're going to use now that we've done that we're going to put paper on this as a block and show you that it makes really nice contact on the beads and then we're going to show you some other tricks to take it a little step further. Just like the vinyl tape, I don't want a pocket. I don't want an air bubble. I want the details of these radiuses and the lowest of the lows in these beads. So I'm making sure that the paper is going to be pushed in down to the very bottom of each one of these, rolling over. That's the whole goal here is we're trying to catch all of the details. At this point, we can bring this in. It may or may not be hard to view on the camera, but we're hitting almost exactly where I wanted to be hitting. On the car, the bottom lows of these Vs is the issue that we're having blending out to the flat. What's nice is this is touching first the outer edges and the top. Now what I'm gonna do when I get to the final is I'm gonna cut the edges off so it's not sanding the flats. We spent the time to make the flats even with the car. The last thing I wanna do is wear a groove right into that. So I'm going to cut and remove the paper shy of the edge and then what you end up with is 
is a perfect guide that is going to be riding on the filler that's already done and it's only going to be sanding the bead in the middle. But I can't put body filler on here and spread this. So it would probably be pretty messy if I was putting filler and trying to spread it over all these beads with the spreader like we have here. This is a spring steel spreader. You guys can use whatever spreader that you have laying around. I would recommend using the steel one, not the plastic one. And the reason that we're going to this extent is because the plastic spreader, when you sand or cut them, it's one thing to cut it with a razor blade so you get a really nice edge, but it's another thing to sand the plastic spreader and then you end up with the hairs of the plastic, even if you go to a really fine grit and it's not going to remove the plastic like you would want. So what I want to do is take this profile and transfer it onto the spreader. What's cool about this particular process up to this point is this can be used for many different things. What if you wanted to remake this bead exactly without having to have a wagon to cut up and make this an extra cab? If you had a Pullmax or a Linux or a Nibbler, one of those reciprocating hammers, this is exactly how you would get a bead profile to then Put blue Dicom layout fluid, so that's what we're going to be using here. Dicom is the brand. It's for actually laying out stuff with molds and machining. And what we're going to do is we're going to just paint this onto a small area that we're going to use. Now, if you were doing this for a Pullmax or any other reciprocating hammer, you would be spraying this onto a thick, solid piece of stock that you could then mill down and weld into the shanks on your Pullmax. So if you pretend this thing is three quarters to an inch thick that you're gonna use for the hammer portion to make those dies, this is exactly how you're gonna get that profile. You are then going to clamp or push that down to the steel and we're going to be using a very sharp scribe to then mark exactly where that profile lands on the dicom. And now that we have a very precise scribe line, I'm going to go over to the belt sander and I'm going to just remove exactly to the scribe line and make sure that I don't have any burrs on the edge. You can use a file, you can use a die grinder, a barrel sander, whatever you need to create that profile exact. And now we're able to take that, what was just a scrap spreader and actually scuff and prep this door and then use it as a spreader. So we took it over to the belt sander, the Amer braid, and just roughed this in. Again, you can use a, a barrel sander on a die grinder, a file, and then I'm just using the same sandpaper that we're gonna be using to just get rid of any burrs or sharp edges and finesse it in. Now we have a very accurate way to then come in and spread our filler. So if you had a dent or something in your car and you needed to get that shape back perfect, but over a longer area, you could make something that rides like that. Maybe you make the spreader to where it rides on the edge of a body line that you can just hold flat, and then that will then keep everything straight. These are just a lot of little tricks that we problem solve with each project. Sometimes, we, this is the first time we've had to do it to this extent because of all these details. The other thing that we will likely do is make one where it fits over this bead detail and every one of these squares on this truck will have to then be spread and make perfect and then block it back. So I'll make, I don't see a need in making a spreader for this, but I definitely see a need in making this bead perfect. We'll do the same thing with the body filler to make a sanding block. And then all of our radiuses are exactly the same. Just details. Now that we have the spreader made 
and we have a sanding block made, we can then go to the areas that, like we touched on in the very beginning, the areas that are already body worked completely flat just outside of the bead line is what we're going to focus on. I'm going to take this over for all of the beads on this truck and show you guys how we actually spread the filler onto the bead and then block it back nice and perfect to get that crisp detailed line where you don't have waves and ripples and things. The only other thing we'll have to figure out is how we're going to finesse the very edge of the bead. Hope this helps you guys think outside the box and come up with other solutions for the onesie twosie problems that you guys are for sure gonna run into. We run into them all the time and it's different per project. If you guys haven't already checked out the Sylvester's Customs homepage on YouTube, we've done you guys a solid and actually categorized everything from body filler, in sections to metalwork and paint videos. Depending on what portion your project is in, it makes it much easier for you guys to be able to search in the categories and pick videos that are very relatable from one another. Hope you guys got something out of this video. Please share it with somebody if they're struggling with their body lines and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>